la 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 I love you, I love you, I love you. It's breakfast time. Is that hummus? Yeah. I so, do, have you seen pita bread? Oh, oh they have croissants. Yes. So that we do, we do have a lot from Iraq and also Morocco. The largest Sephardic Jews, they call those Sephardic Jews. The Sephardic Jews are actually come from North Africa and also Spain and Portugal. And so we actually have the largest group of Sephardic Jews living in Israel today are Moroccan and Iraqi Jews. But we have Persian, Tunisian, Yemenite Jews, and on and on and on and on. And it goes all the way to the um, broad side of the spectrum. We have African Jews. We have Jews from Ethiopia. And so uh, the Ethiopian Jews are, um, uh, we have about 100,000 Ethiopian Jews living in Israel today. And they're descendants of King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba. And it was a chief rabbi in Israel in the 80s that said, hey, listen, you know, we want to invite the Ethiopian Jews to come back and, to, and settle in their biblical homeland. And that's what happened, um, but not without a major, major military operation. How do you get Ethiopian Jews back to their, their biblical homeland? They had been persecuted throughout the centuries. How do you get them back to their biblical homeland? Well, you have to do a military operation. We don't have any friendly neighbors with Ethiopia. So we actually took big planes, we painted them white, we got rid of that Israeli flag and the Star of David, we painted them white, we ripped out all the chairs in the planes, all the seats, and we landed on dirt airstrips in Sudan, loaded as many Ethiopian Jews as possible in the plane, and airlifted them back to their Jewish homeland. <clears throat> and so really just a major feat, that was called Operation Moses and Operation Solomon. So today we have over 100,000 Ethiopian Jews, it's just amazing. Yeah, and so if you want to look, um, if you actually want to look into, uh, it, there's a really good Netflix show that's also, it's called, I think it's, it's the Red Sea Diving Club, and that's also, they ha actually had undercover diving clubs where the Israeli Mossad were in there and getting the Ethiopian Jews in there, they were acting like it was a scuba diving club, <laughs> and helping them and assisting them so they could get them out and there lift them back to their Jewish homeland. It really is amazing. Yeah, there's still Ethiopian Jews that are actually coming into Israel. Um, uh, and so then we have, uh, on the other side of the spectrum, we have Ashkenazi Jews. And so we have blonde hair, blue-eyed Russian Jews, right? In fact, scripture, in fact, scripture actually, uh, it says that the Jews would come back from the northern countries. And those are uh, Jews from the former Soviet Union. Today, 20% of the population of Israel speak Russian. So those are our Russian Jews. The largest groups of, um, of, of Ashkenazi Jews, see what I mean? Aren't you glad we're not gonna go that way? Look at the, yeah. <laughs> we're going that way. <clears throat> That's the traffic coming into work in Tel Aviv. So we've got the Ethiopian Jews on, on one side, and then we've got the Russian Jews on the other side. 
And so uh, we have Russian Jews, but the largest group are going to be Polish and Romanian Jews. Those are our largest group of Ashkenazi Jews. But we have Polish Jews, Romanian Jews, Jews from Hungary. Uh, and Ashkenazi Jews could also be American Jews, Australian Jews, Jews from England, and all of uh, and all of Europe. And so um, and so that's uh, and so that that's it's like a little bit of everything. It's Joseph Code, Joseph's Code of many colors. So in the late 1800s under a man by the name of Theodore Herzl. He's our father of modern Zionism. He wrote two, he wrote a book called The Old New Land and he wrote another book called The um, uh, Jewish State. And his dream was to revive a Jewish state. And he actually worked very hard, and that's why we call him the father of modern Zionism, you know, getting this, this uh, these uh, European and Eastern, Europe, uh, Eastern European Jews giving, you know, giving them these, the ideology of Zionism, teaching them how to be farmers in Russia. So these young kids in Russia, in the former Soviet Union, are learning how to farm a land. They're not prepared for this situation. I mean, think about it. They're not, they're not prepared, I mean, for the climate here, the heat, computer technology, apps, ways, that great GPS app is, that's Israeli. It's Israeli. Um, WhatsApp is Israeli. Fiber, Tango, and on and on and on, all Israeli technology. Yeah. And so, so when is so Israel becomes a nation? And did you know that like when the early pioneers came back, because they came from uh, like a hundred different nations, you know, all, all with one common bond, we're Jewish and back in the land of God. Because you don't even speak the same language, and all of a sudden, well, as you're studying, you literally start to understand. I can tell that we're not the only uh, bus that knows about this site. Oh, it's become, yeah, I mean, because tourism was dead for two years or more, um, everyone has come back, and it's great to have everyone back, but literally, I mean, we're talking, all the hotels are full, and they're starting to be full for all for 2023. The hotels are almost packed for 2024 already. It's crazy. Yeah. We are, where are we? I don't even know, but I'll keep you guys updated as soon as I know. Hey Zach, where are we? We are in Caesarea. Caesarea? I believe. Okay. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I missed the name of the the yeah, yeah, yeah. on the on the front. I'm almost <laughs> positive. Okay. I saw the, I saw a street sign. All right. So we're gonna go with that. a name for himself as a master builder. I guess he did because here we are 2,000 years later talking about Herod and his master <laughs> And you'll be seeing lots of uh, Herodian feats and lots of Herodian um, uh, buildings. But uh, let's go back in history even further than that. Let's go all the way back. You see, you're going to see that there's all these different layers of civilization in the land. And, um, and in a lot of places, we'll see tells which we just keep building in the same place over and over and over again and build itself in these different civilizations. <laughs> what makes this so important, this area? Not because it's the Bible, but because if you look at the map of Israel, you will see that we are like a land bridge, right? Guess who becomes the next ruler of Judea? His son Herod. Herod the Great takes control. Was he Jewish? No. He was kind of converted, but he was 
sympathizer, Herod, Herod was an Edomian, and he ruled Judea between 37 and 4 BC and 4 BC. So Herod had to make a name for himself in order to keep his power. And what does Herod do? He decides to see the master builder with the best way to do that. And so Herod starts building projects everywhere all over the land. And you know that he renovated the temple, the, the second temple. And Herod decided in this particular location, this would make an amazing part of the city. And so Herod literally starts a project in 12 BC and he builds a massive port. In fact, this becomes the largest port in the east. He wanted to have competition with Alexandria and he did. And so this becomes the largest port. Cement had just been invented during the time of Herod, by the way, or during the Roman period. And so they had just invented cement. They took cement with dry, with, uh, with basalt, which is kind of lava. Lava, dried lava, and they put it in boxes and dropped it into the sea and it hardened and he made a massive port 1500 feet wide and this became the major port city, meaning every person coming from Rome, a 10 day journey by ship to Rome, came to Caesarea. That's how important this is. And so it becomes a massive city. Herod built it in a typical, remember he was a pagan sympathizer, so he built it in a typical, typical Greco-Roman way. Caesarea had everything a Polish city would have. We have a theater. He had an arena or an amphitheater. He had a people drone with a horse race track. Bathhouses, pagan temples. Do what he achieved it. So a massive, massive city during the Herodian period. Now we're in the theater right now. By the way, this was built by Herod. It was taller than what we're seeing today. So it seated about 5,000 people. Whoa. Now, uh, today, we even have, we have concerts here all the time. It seats about 30 people today. Think about it, it's bigger it was than, bigger. Than, than it is today. So the theater. Um, what took place in this theater? Well, um, plays, comedies, tragedies. In fact, they had these characters and these masks. So they would change their masks and they would change their characters. In the north of uh, Israel, everything's like really chill and mellow. So for the next a couple of days, it's very chill. Same thing in the same thing when we go to the desert. But Jerusalem's in more intense and crowded. So All right, how many people believe that the Bible, like everything in the Bible, is accurate and true? Amen. 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 I do too, right? But archaeologists don't. They have to prove it. And so, um, uh, can you imagine when they were in the theater? The theater up there was excavated in the 50s, and one of the one of the stairs started to kind of wobble. So they flipped it over, and they found the real one. That's in a, a, a replica inscription, actually for the first time ever mentioning Pontius Pilate. Wow! <laughs> Proving there was a Pontius Pilate. <laughs> Not just that there was a Pontius Pilate. It says it was during the rule of the Emperor Tiberius. So let's say around 26 to 36 A.D proving the New Testament correct again. Wow. Nice. So why Pontius Pilate? 
because the Roman procreator governor had a couple of years to come from Rome, their seat was here in Caesarea. In fact, after the destruction of the temple, Caesarea becomes the capital of what we know as Palestine for 600 years. 600 years. So it's very important, a very important city. So the Roman governor or procurator would probably stay in Herod's palace, which is right here, um, and uh, they would have ruled from Caesarea. But wait a minute, wasn't Pontius Pilate up in, um, up in Jerusalem during one particular Passover? Well, Josephus Flavius, one of our famous Jewish historians, actually records that during Passover or the feast, there could be three million people up in Jerusalem. That's a lot of Jews, right? Three million Jews. How easy could they have just overthrown the, Jew, uh, the Roman government? So the Roman procurator or governor who would real, rule from here would have to make his way to Jerusalem for the three feasts to oversee the peace. That's why Pontius Pilate was staying in Fortress Antonia when they brought Jesus to him. He would have normally been here except for during the feasts. Now, Pontius Pilate. So these Roman procurators had a couple of years to come over, rob, steal, root, cheat, and go back rich. He was the same way. He was corrupt. Now, when he came, he wanted to make a name for himself and show his power. Looked out over Jerusalem, Josephus Flavius records this, and he decided, you know what? I don't see that in Jerusalem that there's any, like, we don't have standards to Caesar and the gods. So I'm going to put up standards. Now, what did the Bible say? The holy temple, there would be no graven image, right? So that infuriated the Jewish people. It was invaluable to think that there was going to be a graven image in the holy temple or the holy city. And so the Jews were so infuriated that they marched upon Caesarea, thousands of them, against Pontius Pilate to show them they were not going to accept idolatry in their, in their temple. You know what? Why don't we let this group come in? Let's move for them. <laughs> That's <funny. laughs> Hey guys, pretty cool, huh? So we learn all about what happened here in this temple or this theater. Ooh, so much information to contain, but it's pretty cool. I'll probably explain more as soon as we're all settled down and as soon as I recontain all the information that was given to me. This is a pretty cool place. Let me go ahead and record exactly what this place is if I see the sign. So first we gonna exit out of here. Next stop, I'm not sure, but I'm just following my groupies. Okay, so it's just a national park. So this is just a Roman theater, which is pretty cool. So you guys could pause and read exactly what it is in case you guys are reading any other languages just go ahead and pause I'll go ahead and go up and down all right Oh, no, I was just gonna...